PC, accounting for your future. Hi, this is Dave from APC. So welcome to this Accounting Standard Makes It Easy video. And in this video, we're going to introduce to you the IAS number 10, events after the reporting period. So events after the reporting period, uh, what do I mean by reporting period? Is the financial statement in the event. So usually uh, for the SFP, which is the statement of financial position, the year event will be 31st December. So why are we going to uh, do something about the events happening after the year event? It's simply because of this timeline. So we've got the year start, for example, the 1st January, we've got the year event. For example, 31st December. Of course, the uh, user of the financial statements will be caring about the events happening uh, during this period because, because it's for the current year, isn't it? But we usually, uh, I mean, audit the financial statements because the user will not trust the financial statements unless the auditor puts his opinion onto the true and fairness of the financial statements later on. So we always start auditing the financial statements after the year end. So that, of course, the events after the reporting period says the events happening between the year end, which is the 31st December, up to the financial statements being issued to the shareholder. Within this period, any events happening within this period will be the events after the reporting period. Because we start auditing the financial statements after the year ends, uh, and it will take maybe three to four months before it issues to the shareholders into the annual journal meeting, uh, so that, of course, uh, any events happening between this period, of course, we need to account for it. So, the events happening within this period can either be adjusting events, which means we're going to make some adjustments related to it, Alternatively, it would be the non-adjusting event as well, which means we simply disclose those events happening uh, in the note of the financial statement. But how are we going to determine whether we should adjust it or non-adjust it? So, for example, if the customer, John, happening after the year event says to you I've gone bankruptcy and I'm not affording $1,000 pay per year anymore. So if that is the case of course as of the year event we have included the uh, allowance for receivable or the receivable balance is $100 but um, uh, I mean $100 million but then John says to you I'm not affording uh, $1,000 right now so as a result of it it changes the assumptions outside the year event right so that, of course, if that is the case, of course, we're going to reduce that $1,000 that cannot be afforded by John as at the year end. So that's what I mean by adjusting event. Another example of the adjusting event is that the uh, ICE number one says that the financial statements need to be prepared under the going concern basis as at the year end. But after the year end, so the company uh, may have some of the uncertainty of going into bankruptcy. For example, the sales revenue has dropped significantly and cannot be recovered. Uh, cannot be covering the cost anymore. So, as a result of it, of, of course, from a company's point of view, we have to prepare the financial statement under the breakup basis, which means the change to the assumptions at the year event from the going concern to the breakup basis. That's what I mean by adjusting event. Okay, so that's two examples of adjusting event. Because why do we adjust the financial statement? It's simply because it changes the assumptions at the year event, either with the accounting policy or the accounting estimates. The non-adjusting events, which means it gives no evidence existing at the year event. For example, during this period, during this period, that the inventory has been damaged by the fire. A fire takes place and damaged all of its inventories. So as a result of it, of course, that fire has not been included as the assumption as of the event. 
because we can never predict what will happen in the future. So as a result of it, of course, that's just one example of the non-adjusting rate. Even though the fire takes place and damage all of those inventory, but we cannot reduce that inventory down outside the year end. For example, the inventory is worth at $300 million outside the year end. All of those are damaged. We cannot reduce it down to zero. All we need to do, because it's, we cannot predict it in the first place, so all we need to do is we're going to disclose this fire happened in the note of the financial statement. Okay, so that's all for the introduction for the ICE number 10. It means after the reporting period, and hope you enjoyed this lecture and looking forward to seeing you in the next of our accounting standard video. APC, accounting for your future.